Our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Technology can shape growth. Help us be more agile. We can use technology to change, disrupt the landscape of the industries that we participate in. Building technology so that others can build technology and make things happen. Our success is not dependent on our products. It's dependent on the success that our customers, our partners have with our products. It's really not about our ambitions, but it's the application of our ambitions so that we can deliver digital transformation. I want you to envision what difference can you make to shape the world. Good morning, partners, and welcome to the panel, Strategies from the Titans of Sales and Industry. My name is Sherman Crancer, as you always, as you know, and, and uh, my co-host, Jason Hinton, is here from Chicago. Uh, Jason, you want to say hello to everyone? Hey, guys, I'm glad we got the power back. So we're ready to go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that is good that we got the power back. No, no kidding. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, today we got a really fantastic, uh, you know, show here. Uh, we have uh, Pax Eight uh, is uh, is is in our, as our featured guest today, and we're going to really dig deep into some of the reasons why. Uh, we are seeing um, a great number, a great deal of partners uh, choose them to, uh, you know, for their distribution relationship. So uh, we're going to do, um, you know, thought of the week. Uh, we're going to get into our growth, uh, simplify, optimize, repeat. Uh, oop, we have a little bit of a, um, uh, a um, uh, typo here. We have LinkedIn, but that's actually going to be switched out for PAX 8. Uh, and then we're going to have a partner back office, and then we'll provide them the contact information for everyone. So in studio today, uh, we have uh, Nick uh, Hetty, uh, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing. If you want to just say hello real quick. How's it going? Nice to meet everybody. <laughs> Great. And then we also have uh, Ryan Walsh, Chief Channel Officer uh, for PAX8. Hello, everyone. All right. Hey, guys, thanks so much for, for coming in today. Really do appreciate it. I think it's going to be really, really awesome. So let's get into the, you know, thought of the week here. You know, the thought of the week, what, what I wanted to do is kind of talk about um, something that I've been noticing a lot recently. Okay. And it has been uh, a lot about, hey, how do I get leads? Um, how do I build uh, my business? Uh, how do I, what type of MDF programs uh, are there out there? And Frankly, uh, I'm disappointed, uh, really disappointed, because we have talked about this over and over again, uh, Azure Everywhere. It has got to be the most uh, or the most productive, but also the, the best possible program that Microsoft, I think, has ever put out to help build pipelines. And if you don't know what it is, I'm going to ask you to, to put everything down, to actually sit here and listen to what we're going to talk about real quick. Azure Everywhere is a, a market development fund. It's, it's money that we give you to help build your pipeline. Okay, and, and what it is, it's basically having uh, Azure type of conversations, workshops, demos, uh, proof of concept type of events uh, with some of your customers. And we ask you to register them before Oh, we are reconnecting with Chicago here in just a second. So hold on one minute. Um, but with the Azure, the, you know, with, with the Azure piece that we're talking about is it's $1,500. We're going to pay you if you have a conversation with somebody that has $1,000 attached to it. Now, the second thing we'll do is that for, uh, you know, if your opportunity has $2,000 a month in potential spend, Azure spend, we will give you $3,000. 
Now, what we're finding uh, is that partners are continually ask me, hey, well, wh where, where do I go? What do I do? How do I get to this? It's in the partner investment engine. And if you have any questions about it, please contact myself or contact Terry Isinger, uh, Thomas Rivera, Jason Hinton. Um, we will help you get there. But all you have to do is register your conversation. I've been talking to partner after partner uh, lately, and I, and I say, well, hey, how many Azure uh, uh, presentations have you done in the, in the past you know, six months? And they'll tell me, oh, I've done six. I'm like, well, did you register any of those? And they'll say no. And then I look at them, I say, well, are you going to inspire? And then they say, it's too expensive. And then I just don't say anything because it doesn't make sense. You know, it makes sense if you do these Azure everywhere to, to do, I mean, you're gonna build your pipeline, but you're also, you know, you can use some of that money to, to pay for your way to go even to uh, uh, Inspire, right? Uh, all you have to do is invite 10 people, 10 of your customers to a MTC, if you like, uh, or to your office and say, we're gonna talk about concepts of Azure, right? Uh, then take them to a nice dinner afterwards, whatever you have to do. But if you brought 10 people in and they had $1,000 a month in potential uh, Azure spend, and remember, we're not asking you to even sell this thing. We're not saying that you have to sell it. It's you have to have this conversation and you have to do it two weeks beforehand. There are some rules here, right? But we pay very, very quickly. And it's a shame. It's an absolute shame if we don't have every single person, you know, doing this right now. It's the most lucrative, the richest way. Uh, we have several partners here in Southern California that have done over $300,000 in submissions. Wow. $300,000, okay? But their pipeline, we're happy to pay that out. If their, pipe, their pipeline is at about $1.5 million in Azure, okay? And they're closing it and they're, they're doing it. But look at all that money that they now can pour back into marketing and you know, other different things. So uh, I'm gonna leave you with, <clears throat> with that thought of the week of, hey, let's take advantage of the things that we have in front of us. Let's take advantage of those things and, and utilize them and, and exploit them to our benefit, not exploit them in a bad way, but yeah, let's go ahead and make sure you know, that we are, are doing the best we can to, to bring in revenue streams that <clears throat> maybe we didn't have access to in the past. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with this, and this is directly correlated to you know, whether you're doing Azure or not. Dreamers are the ones that talk about what they're going to do and leaders are the ones that talk about or do what they talk about. So you got to ask yourself the question, are you just going to still continue to be just a dreamer or are you a leader? And if you're a leader, let's go ahead and register some darn Azure everywhere presentations, all right? All right, let's move on into growth here. Uh, that's my thought of the week. Uh, let's make sure we register Azure everywhere. Come on, let's do this. Let's get this thing started. All right, so getting into growth, you know, one of the, the, the things that we have here, we're going to just go ahead and, and, and put up, oop, let me go bring it back here, um, are some of the, the, the questions that we're going to have. So the first question we're going to throw out there is, is, is the pain points question, you know? So, so guys, and I'll let you guys, whoever you want to answer first, you know, what are, what pain points do you see partners experiencing, uh, you know, with massive growth targets? Let's start there. Okay. You know, I'd like to take this one, but I think by way of context, and Nick, maybe just a, a quick overview of where we're coming from, PAX 8, so like we can, you can understand our perspective about the answer to this question. Yeah, so PAX 8 is a cloud distributor, and really what we're trying to do is help you to simplify distribution. So we want to help you uh, identify what the products are that you want to standardize your stacks, which is your, your go-to-market strategy. And we want to make that automatable, repeatable, uh, to the best of our ability, we want to be your wingman in that scenario. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about where we're coming from, but I just want to put that context out there because we deal with partners who want to move to the cloud. And so the answer to the question is that pain points, one, growth from our perspective is really coming from cloud. And so what we hear from our partners, one of the first things that you, you can't go to a, a trade show without someone talking about a stat of how much business is moving to it. What we're finding from our partners and others that are interested in it is where do I start? And that's a very big um, pain point, especially with the second one that, that we also hear, which is when you're dealing with cloud, whether it's um, SaaS or infrastructure as a service, um, Azure, it's you know converting your business model to a recurring revenue one. Um, that is a massive undertaking, and that's not easy to do if you're doing some form of uh, pro services, break fix, system integration. Um, to change your business model to support a recurring one is uh, can be ominous if you don't know um, what that looks like and how to do it. 
And, and the third one, from our perspective, we are only focused on distributing cloud products, is dealing with the channel chaos that comes from dealing with multiple vendors who have cloud products. Um, I used to work at a born in the cloud vendor. We had our own portal. We invited our partners to come in and order and interact with that portal. But if you're a channel partner and you're trying to grow um, the number of offerings, the stack of technology, as Nick mentioned, um, you're gonna be dealing with three, four, five, six, seven portals. And now the, the cloud doesn't become scalable anymore as a partner. Uh, you're really introduced to channel chaos. How do you aggregate all that to have a seamless experience for your customers? And these are, uh, so these are some of the pain points that we're hearing about how do you, how do you take advantage of the growth? Jason, what, what are your thoughts? You know, what, what kind of you know, pain points are, are, are you hearing about um, so from some of your, your partners when it comes to massive Thanks, growth? Sherman. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would say the biggest thing that people are talking about, and, and we actually just had a meeting of all the partner development managers to, to go through this as well, is what are the risks? So risk mitigation around cost, not knowing necessarily what um, uh, what an on-prem infrastructure looks like in the cloud, and I, you know, my feeling is that Pax8 and other distributors are really trying to help get that um, uh, transition process to be as easy and smooth as you can, and then we're trying to get them trained up and work with them on practice building so they can communicate that to their customers because I think they see the opportunity, but as we talked about before, there's intent, which is I know I need to go there and I have a plan but there's not a strategy around how to get there, and that's what we're trying to do with partners today. Great, great, that's, that's, that's a really good insight there, uh, Jason. So, you know, let, let's move into the, the next one, you know, sales and reverse marketing. You know, what are your thoughts, you know, what, what's more important uh, and why? And I, I, I'm debating this. Now, I'm a 100% sales guy, okay? So, but I've gotten swayed considerably. So I, I'd like to know your thoughts. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, this is a question that is near and dear to my heart is the, the SVP of sales and marketing. Uh, not too long ago, probably nine months ago, uh, we had a VP of sales and a VP of marketing. And inherently it becomes siloed and you have sales thinking, hey, I'm talking to partners. This is our, our go-to-market message. And you have what marketing thinks is the go-to-market message. You then are getting leads with a different message and then talking to those leads that are gained with a different message and inherently they, they begin to battle. So I like that on there, it is sales versus marketing. Uh -huh. uh, because nine months ago we did, made a decision that it was going to be sales and marketing together. And now all of our teams are, are running teams with different departments and divisions in it. And the result has been a amazing message that is coming from the partners through sales. Um, marketing matches that. Our field marketing, digital marketing, and our sales force uh, is all on the same page, and I think the, the results have been great for us. So I would say that it is a unit to drive sales. Do you, okay, very good. I would add to that that, that you know, I come from the product side of things, and watching that unity is really, I think the benefit really accrues to the external audience and, and the buyer because you don't see you know, different types of positioning. You don't hear uh, a, a sales rep saying one thing where a product collateral is, is describing something else in terms of a benefit. And, and the power of that is, is massive. I've been in organizations that almost would argue that there needs to be some division mm -hmm. um, so that you don't have one dominate the other. But really, I think the strength, and, and we've lived it, is that if it, if, it, if it goes together and it's pointed on a sales objective, uh, it's a very powerful thing. Yeah, I think one of the, you know, uh, one of the things that, that I like to bring up is, is, is business risk. You know, uh, and then and total cost of sale. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that that's something that um, we we tend to overlook, or it's easy to overlook, because we're chasing the deal, but we're not really putting in. Well, how many hours did it take to do a, uh, you know, the, the, the just the discovery? Then how many hours did it take to do planning? You know, and then what other resources did we bring in to get a lot of these basic things of sales? Okay, and then what is the total cost of sale at the end of it? <laughs> now compare that to let's say we did a marketing vertical and we were just kind of pushing people to buy certain packages, okay? Uh, and, and knowing that, you know, uh, the, the public today is a lot more conditioned to buy on package and on, you know, the belief that the internet is, is, is truthful. Mm -hmm. Where that wasn't the case, uh, you know, 10 years ago, right? Uh, it wasn't. And uh, the, 
you know, you have to be, I think, a little careful with investing so much in sales, knowing that the total cost of your sale can be, you know, about 10 times the cost if you were to do just a marketing plan. But then again, you still need to have your people in the field. So that's why it's sales versus well, marketing. Well, I think your point taken, too, because, uh, you know, statistics are showing that the line of business buyer is doing a lot more homework in terms of learning about the solution that they're considering. And yeah. so if, mm -hmm. if there is a divide between what product and marketing we're saying and then the sales rep now gets on, the, on that call uh, associated with that opportunity and it's not coordinated with what they may have researched and read is the key value proposition, the benefit, um, its unique yeah. uh, positioning, then you know, you're going to cast some doubt, mm -hmm. I think, in a buying audience. Yeah, this, this is one of the things that uh, we measure and we, we refer to it as the customer acquisition cost. And we can get into, once you have uh, incurred that cost to acquire the customer and you have him in the door, he is spending money with you as a partner, how do you then efficiently and effectively get that next product, get that next sale um, with a customer that you already have? I, I love that. I mean, that, that is, is so spot on. Jason, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I mean, when you're talking about the, the customer acquisition piece, I think that, you know, what I've been talking to some of our customers about today is somebody selling someone. Either the customers are selling you on why they're not going to do it, or you're providing certain solutions to them that are um, compelling them to take action, right? And I think sometimes people are too busy working in the business and just trying to get the next sell, add the next customer, than to do some of this. But one thing I would encourage all the partners that are on the call today to start looking at or ask Sherman and I about is we're going to be getting the P&L tool out that we have from Neural Impact, if you haven't already seen it, and give you some time to work through it. And that's something my partners in Illinois and I are going to do is really go through this tool so that we understand what the profitability is of the solutions you have and what the cost of goods sold is so we really can get better on margin and then figure out how we're going to drive that through in building those plus one practices or getting to the cloud. So. Look for that to come up in the next couple months and definitely more focus in FY19. Great, thanks a lot for that. Uh, so, so, you know, coming from the distrib distribution point of view, you know, how, how are the partners that you work with growing? And what are, you, what are the strategies that uh, you see are, are, are really working for them? I'd like to take that one, yeah. Sherman, uh, to start, uh, because um, again, this is something that we are watching uh, partners who are trying to transition to the cloud embrace it. What does it look like? Uh, the first, the first thing that we're seeing is um, they got in the game, and so I know that might sound simplistic, but we talk to a lot of partners who have a different line of business. They have a different type of business. They haven't fully embraced um, the cloud business yet, and know that they need to, but may not know how to do it. And what we see is that may cause them to pause and not get in the game. Mm -hmm. And so the ones that are winning are, are getting in the game and starting. The second thing, and again, I think um, you might be surprised to hear me say this, but um, they're committing to the cloud. And, I, and that distinction is you, if you have decided that you want to get into the cloud and it's a part of your business, we're seeing our, our partners who do embrace it. Um, they're not only getting in the game, when they commit to the cloud, they're growing faster and they're more profitable than those that have the cloud as just a smaller piece. Um, IDC did a great study around the cloud opportunity sponsored by Microsoft. And they interviewed uh, a number of partners and they found that for those partners that had more than 50% uh, revenue from cloud offerings, they grew twice as much as a partner who had less than 50% they were one and a half times more profitable than a partner who had less. So um, it, it's interesting when, when you think about that, uh, but what we see is there could be some resistance because you're in a business uh, that you know very well and you might not be familiar with the cloud, but what we're seeing is those that do that commitment where they're, they're all in um, and they become more successful. And I think a part of that success, the strategy is also specializing in their offering. Um, we see another um, uh, issue is if you just start selling cloud services without really thinking about what your special sauce is, the niche that you own, it might not be optimized. You not, might not be efficient. So we're finding that there's, there's an unusual focus on specialization. And we've heard some crazy things like um, uh, 
MSPs that focus on yoga shops in Northern California. I mean, that type of specialization. But the issue is, and the standard that we see is applied out there is, if whatever that specialization is, whether you're a security provider or you own a special type of function or an industry, you need to be in the top three. And if you're not in the top three on a short list of opportunities, then you really don't own that niche. And that's something that we're seeing that for those that embrace their specialization, they're winning and they're doing very well. They're growing fast. And the last thing I would add is that those that are embracing the cloud are really doing it in a way that they're finding attached dollars to the cloud products that are being sold. So we'll talk a little bit later about you know, the massive um, uh, adoption of Office 365. The most successful partners that are growing are finding ways to attach their services, managed services, around those cloud offerings. And that's the way to win. I, that's a really good insight. I, I really do appreciate it. You know, do you have any th other thoughts on, on that? Uh, it, it just reminds me of one of the partners that we talk to often. He's a, a local guy, Leaf Tech, out of Colorado. And uh, he was saying yes to everything. Anything that plugged into the wall was his business model. <laughs> um, and as soon as he embraced the cloud and, and embraced um, Pax8 and in, in the business model that we were trying to get him uh, working on, and standardized the stack that he was offering and, and going mm -hmm. to market with, uh, it made him more efficient, it made him uh, more repeatable, and so he started to see great success of embracing the cloud model, standardizing the stack, um, and, and that was his strategy. So standardizing his stack, let's, let's just kind of just touch on that real quick. Uh, I talk about that all the time. I talk about that, hey, if you're an MSP, uh, you, you got a problem. Actually, you do, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and I mean, you got a myriad of problems. One, you have a problem business. Uh, people only ever call you because they got a problem. Um, when's the last time somebody called you and said, hey man, you do such a great job, I can't <laughs> wait to send you in the money, right? You just never get that, so A there. B, business risk, huge. Marketing, uh, 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 price to market your product, huge, right? 10 times the cost, right? Uh, and, and, and you can never be the, uh, you're always a jack of all trades. You're never a master of, of any one particular thing. And you know, my suggestion is always uh, take a hard look at your business. And, and if, you're, if you're offering everything to everyone, it's time to um, start thinking about tomorrow and bring that down to about five things. That's what you do. And you become the 500 pound gor gorilla you know, in the jungle uh, in your marketplace, in your vertical, and that's where you start to make money, you reduce risk, your profitability goes up, um, you know, you, your calls that are coming in aren't about, you know, you know, this darn printer driver, right? But you're thinking about, okay, I'm using uh, software to create big margins. You become a software company. Um, have you had conversations like that uh, with some of your partners? Absolutely, I mean, what's interesting about what you're saying, Sherman, is that the, that conversation is shifting because you're dealing with a line of business buyer now. You might have had a technology conversation in the past, but now you're talking about business outcomes. Well, that's very difficult to do if you're trying to do everything. Mm -hmm. But if you do narrow your focus, standardize your offering, you can have a more involved a business conversation about business outcomes, and I think that allows you to differentiate yourself. So, so I have an idea here um, for, for some people. I think a, a lot of the partners are like, gosh, this all makes sense. All makes sense. However, I'm scared to Dickens to actually do it. Yeah. Because I'm making money right now. Right. Uh, or I'm barely making money right now. <clears throat> I can't just change. So I had an idea. Idea is to hire a web developer and create a sub page to your business. And on that sub page, <coughs> reduce all the amount of, of offerings to where you want to go and what you want to do. And then start using social media and all the different things that we're talking about for the buyer 2.0. Start pushing your leads there, okay, to that site, okay? And then you start building up your business and then you get to a point where you have a break even and you can break away and you see the light, you see there's gonna be end up more profitability, you know, on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side. You're gonna find out it's easier, probably more rewarding. Uh, you'll probably say, hey, we're gonna divide the office in half. I'm gonna go sit over this half because this other half is just not that great. Uh, but I think that would be a good idea. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think you do see a resistance of, of the move. Um, and I think that there is a, a, a revolution of sorts going on right now between break fix and, and, and cloud. 
and you were spot on earlier, break fix, you are training your customers to only contact you when, when there is a problem. Um, the uh, allure of the cloud is that it is more efficient um, and, and the opportunity to mark up those managed services. I'm not just charging for a service or a server, I am charging for the management of those services. Uh, and I think that the sooner that you can adopt that type of model, um, there is a lot of, of revenue to be had. On average, when we talk to our partners, um, we're seeing every dollar of uh, MSRP that they are um, getting on a product, they're attaching about 70 cents of markup to then manage that service. Well, I think, you know, when I'm thinking about your, your, your statement, Sherman, I think, well, why does it happen? Why does it not happen that way? Why is it not narrowing? And I think it's because if you're out there struggling, to, to get the next you know, uh, project or dollar to come in, it's easy to take any request that's coming. Uh, customers are doing all their homework, they're asking you to get involved in many different areas, and so it's easy to take whatever's coming. But aren't those bad dollars? Those are bad dollars. Those are I mean, really bad dollars. That, like, it's a dollar, but it's a dollar that may cost you five dollars. I think that's the point. I think that's spot on. I, I think you're absolutely right. It's hard to say no, but I think and again, the question you ask is, what are the ones that are growing the fastest doing? Mm -hmm. They are specializing, and then yes. they win. Yep. They yep. win, they're not diluted in terms of what their offering is, and the more that they know it, the better they will perform. So if you're a partner today, you know, uh, it's easy for me to be on the soapbox <coughs> because, uh, and I'm, I'm fortunate, they just train me all the time, so I get to learn. <laughs> I get to learn all about the latest, greatest sales and marketing techniques. Um, but I was a partner too, and I'm, I'm sure you've had experience in that. If you're, uh, what are the target areas you'd focus on uh, if you were a partner today, and why? Yeah, so I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, I get a lot of access to too many partners. Pax8 has uh, about 300 partners that we're working with, or I'm sorry, 3,000 partners that we are working with right now. And if I was going to start an MSP today, I would lean into the amount of marketing that Microsoft is doing. Uh, you hear all the time that Office 365 is the, one of the fastest growing SaaS products ever in history. And I heard an alarming stat, something that surprised me from uh, one of my Microsoft resources that I talked to. He said, if you categorize small business as 250 employees and below, only 15% of that market has moved to Office 365 in the cloud. Uh, so that means there are 85% left out in that market. And the follow-up question to that was, uh, are you going to move in this next year? And 63% said, yes, I'm, I'm going to be moving. And so if, if it were me and I was starting an MSP, I would jump on that giant wave, that, that swell that is coming, and use that as a Trojan horse. And get customers, new customers transacting with me, and then I would find a way through my standardized stack to get them on a path to upsell, cross-sell, as quickly as I could and, and build out my business that way. I, I, yeah, that, that's profound. That's profound advice. Well, we had uh, one of the partners that Nick mentioned, um, Leave Tech, he did exactly that. He knew he needed to get in. He got in through Exchange, then moved into Office 365. Now he is selling, he, he sells more cloud products than most of our partners, and he's growing faster than he has ever. And so he didn't stop with that opportunity on Office 365 because those other areas you need to cover. Security, there's a lot more offerings and, and, and Microsoft's line card is robust um, to start and keep going in terms of attaching other uh, products to that original start point is, is a great way to go. That's great, that's great. All right, so let's go ahead and roll the simplify, optimize, and repeat. We're going into uh, that section next. Simplify, optimize, and repeat is the uh, next um, in section here. Oh, got one, one too many here. So looking ahead, what steps would you take to streamline operations and increase margins? I think that's the first question. We're just going to go straight for that one. Great. And you know, we'll ask you guys, what, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I would start um, when you look at the um, consumerization of IT you have to automate the acquisition of products. You're dealing with customers who expect to order something and get login credentials immediately. And if you can't provide that as, as a partner, uh, you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. So you absolutely have to find 
automation uh, uh, to, to take advantage of this uh, growing, growing opportunity. And it's got to be fast and it's got to be easy. Um, now, we'll talk a little bit later about some of the things we're doing to help partners get that type of automation so they don't have to build it themselves. Um, but you absolutely have to p play the speed game. And, uh, and, and that will allow you to um, do these, uh, d d deal with this growth efficiently. Um, the second thing is standardizing on the um, products that you want to sell. Doing that in a way that's repeatable. Um, and again, we'll talk about some techniques that we see our partners are using uh, a little bit later and some tools that we provide to help them do that. And then third, um, it's really an upsell, cross-sell game. And so it's important not to stop based on um, selling one product, but looking at uh, how these solutions go together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Nick talked about this earlier, is we study customer acquisition cost quite a bit because that's really the name of the game in cloud revenue growth and profitable revenue growth. Um, there's a great white paper um, out there by uh, the investment group Bessemer, and they talk about some standards and some multiples that you should look at. Uh, let's say if uh, what they suggest is that you need to be spending $24 or less on bringing $1 in of uh, recurring revenue, um, then, then the issue is, well, how do you get there? Well, once you earn the trust of a customer buying one thing from you to upsell and cross-sell allows you to take advantage of the money you spent to acquire that customer. And those are winning strategies in terms of how you increase margin, uh, Sherman, and that's, that's a big component to this is it's not just about automation, it's how do you do that profitably? So, so they can't, so somebody's been asked, or inside Microsoft Circles, we've been kind of socializing different ways and ideas. And I really like this one idea I heard is, is you know, um, hiring a customer success manager mm -hmm. as opposed to your next hunter role. Uh, because if you have, let's say, one or two hunters out there that are, that are really pushing a lot of the business development, but you have a base of 70, 80 clients, high probability those clients haven't bought anything new. They're just still on that monthly recurring right. spend. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, hiring a you know, customer success manager that works with current clients. Yes, yeah, so uh, we refer to this as a, as a wingman. And at Pax8, you'll hear us say this often, get a wingman. Every one of your customers is a unique snowflake. And as much as you want to try and standardize your business to the best of your ability, they're going to need something different. And how easy is it to tack that something different on to your existing stack of technology that, that you're selling to them? And that's where a Pax8 type of, of partner distributor can step in and help if you do have a gap in supporting a certain product that you're not as familiar with, uh, PAX 8 service delivery managers and service delivery agents um, can step in, be your wingman, help you identify more opportunities um, on existing customers. You would think that I, it, that this was that was a setup, but I was I actually, know you didn't know that. I was actually <laughs> just asking the question about, but that's great. No, yeah. no, I mean, and and we will talk about that. We're gonna have a video on that. It's gonna be fantastic. You're gonna love it. Absolutely love it. But, you know, customer success, man, I, I, I think that's, that's really fantastic. Well, you know, you, you started this by talking about sales and marketing. And we find that, you know, when you're, when you're looking at a recurring revenue stream, you can't stop after the acquisition or the sale or placement of the order. If you don't keep that recurring revenue dollar in, then the, the benefit of, the, of recurring revenue is lost on you because you spent all that money to get them in the boat. But if you let them get out, and how, why would they get out? Well, they would get out because they had a bad onboarding experience or because they didn't have responsive uh, support mm -hmm. or the bill was wrong. If you're not focusing on the post-sale operations uh, to keep that customer happy, you could lose it. And so that, that's one of the drivers for why we put this uh, wingman position in place is that you have to look at it from quote to cash. And you can't stop in the middle once you just you, you book the order. You have to win that customer every single month because right. you give them the ability and flexibility to leave at any time if they're unhappy. That's right. Yeah, I, I really I'm I'm excited and elated to see your approach. You know, I think Pax Eight. Uh, um, you know, and we we want to be a little careful here. We 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 love all distributors. Uh, that's our, our disclaimer. Uh, you know, I, I can't uh, uh, say one <laughs> over the other. However, uh, I will say that there's a lot of exciting things that are happening, you know, and I think this is really neat. Your approach is very partner-centric. It's, it's, it's 
kind of approaching it from the new age. Yeah. And I, and I, and I like that because that, that is something that you know, our partners are having some trouble with. You know, there's some holes. There's some, you know, I have one partner. He just recently sold uh, his organization, but the poor guy was working like 90 hours a week. He was like 10 different hats. And I kept saying, hey, whoa, this is too much. You know, you, you're going to, and I, I told him, I said, you're going you're gonna to have a, a life event if, if you don't do something about this, you know, do that. So I think having an approach where you can help is really, really interesting. But yeah, streamlining operations, we talk about that. We talk about uh, quite a bit on marketing spend. You got to keep your marketing spend up. But one of the things that I noticed, um, uh, and I thought it was really interesting, I always thought this was a great idea, is when you see pilots, you're getting into you know, their new planes, and, and they always pull out their flight books. And in the flight books, they have their laminated checklists. Right? <laughs> Great, brilliant idea. Well, let's, you should you know, think about doing that the same. You should be having checklists for everything that you do, processes for everything that you do, you know, just optimizing, repeating, and then looking at strategy sessions to make that quicker, easier, faster, better, because that's going to be a way that you can uh, uh, cut in and actually bring more margin into the business. Can I, I, would, I would jump on that point and extend that, what you're talking about, even further. A lot of partners are looking to sell their business eventually or, or pass it on to somebody else so that it keeps going. And we did a little study on the, not only is, does it help uh, you know, support your growth, but it also increased the valuation of your firm. Mm -hmm. If you do things with process oh, yeah. control, uh -huh. the buyer, uh, whether it's somebody that already works for your firm or somebody else, now you've got something that's repeatable. It's about the repeatable perf performance of that recurring revenue. And we're finding that those that do what you're talking about, Sherman, they're getting more money. They're getting more multiples for their firms uh, yeah. because of it. They're getting four and five mul times the multiple, yeah. yeah. Especially if it's recurring revenue, it's not a lot of project revenue, it's streamlined and everything knows where it's going. Right. Um, so great. All right, so the next question is, you know, what are the most important things partners are looking for when they talk to you about signing up? And you know, how do you address them? What are you hearing? Yeah, so I would say that the number one thing we hear when we come to a show and we are working the event, we have partners coming up and talking to us, mm -hmm. is I, I'm not treated how I think I should be treated. And what I mean there is just like we focus on or our partners focus on their customer experience, Pax8 is hyper-focused on what is that partner experience. And on the floor uh, in our office, we talk about uh, are we providing a wingman experience at every touch point? So whether it is I am trying to reach out to you to, to set up a call for you to hear about us, whether I am your cloud solutions advisor helping you scope out a, a project you're working on, once you have purchased, I'm your service delivery manager, any interaction that you have with Pax8, it is at our core to be your advocate. Um, and, and that is one of our, our values, value number one, uh, which is to publicly support someone or a cause we want to always uh, be that advocate, be that wingman supporting our partners. I'd add a little color to that. That The other value to, the, to dealing with what Nick's talking about is for someone who is getting into this game and may not know where all the potholes are, pax 8 has got a lot of experience around this. This is all we do. This is all we focus on. So um, as a result of that, we can help our partners avoid some of the the, the pitfalls or the stumbling blocks because we've gone through it. And that's, that's part of the advice that we have when we're out um, talking to partners is um, even if you're not familiar with all the nuance of how to take advantage of this, uh, marketing is different, sales is different, billing is different, um, you have a wingman in PAX-8 has gone through this. Uh, we study best practice for partners who have gone through this and we, um, we convey that to our partners when they sign up. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Um, so to maintain high growth targets, this is another question, you must reduce number of offerings and increase costs to provide services. Opinion on that? I think we've we talked about that a little bit already. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't think you need to uh, increase costs. Um, I think you need to, to reduce them. Um, and, and that's really the, that's going to help you maintain those high growth targets. Uh, and then, you know, I think the last one is, you know, provide us, you know, your thoughts on operations. What would be a good example of something you would advise for and or something you would advise against operationally? Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll start with the advice for is um, a, a razor sharp focus on removing friction for your customer experience. 
uh, we're seeing a lot more that maintaining and managing that customer experience is what's going to differentiate you. And you really have to remove friction in this whole process of how they get these products and get covered by the services that you offer. And so you can't uh, miss a day looking at removing manual steps, looking for ways to automate this experience with your customers. I don't think you're, you're going to lose the high touch part of your business, but if you don't take that customer acquisition part of it, or excuse me, product acquisition part of it and streamline that, um, you're going to miss out. You really have to have your operations focus on that. Yeah, in, in order for um, your company, hopefully you're planning on achieving high growth, uh, you need to have an operations team in, in place that is scalable, and you need to be prepared, you need to have planned to achieve that, that high growth. Um, so operationally, yeah, you, that, that is absolutely mm -hmm. as important as possible to automate and remove friction from that. Great. So uh, to the audience, you know, we're flying a little blind today, so I don't have, I uh, can't see the questions that you might be posting uh, just because of some technical difficulties in Chicago. Um, so let's just wait for the end. We'll do a Q&A. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually roll into our TNT boom uh, portion uh, right now, um, and that's uh, Terry and Thomas. We're going to have uh, them roll, and then when we come back, we're going to do PAX 8 uh, and their, uh, their feature presentation on that. So can we uh, go ahead and roll Terry and Thomas, TNT, boom. Good morning, partners. Welcome to Fargo's version of the Grauman's Chinese Theater. Famous people have stopped here several times. We've got Styx, Metallica, Dr. Ruth. Billy Ray, hey, even Jimmy Walker was here. And there's one special person that we found that stopped by, former commander in chief himself, Bill Gates. Woo. Hey, what's on the agenda, Thomas? So what we have on the agenda is Dynamics 365 free vouchers, EMS everywhere. We're gonna be talking about GDPR, a T Microsoft Teams webinar, and a servicing pilot um, overview for Pro Plus. So we're going to see you guys in two. Okay, the first topic we have on the agenda today are the free vouchers that we're offering for Dynamics. It's a $250 value. If you've got somebody within your business that you want to add those exams for, MCP IDs, or if you're looking to add Dynamics to your business, great opportunity. Here's a link for you to go in and see the exams that are available, and then also an alias to send those spreadsheets to. So sign up for Dynamics. Thanks. So good news partners, there is still funding available for uh, the Pi program. Um, the last couple of weeks, you know, I've been mentioning, you know, what's been available for M365 and O365. This week, I'm going to be talking about EMS everywhere. So just like the other ones, it's very straightforward. It is strictly on proof of concept engagements to accelerate EMS opportunities. Um, the program payout is 3K for both assessment and proof of concept. So to be eligible for this, you um, the product has to be Enterprise Mobility Security E5. Uh, the partners are eligible. Um, have to have a competency in either cloud platform, cloud productivity, enterprise mobility management. Um, like I said, the activity and the result is assessment and proof of concept and 3K is the payout. For further questions, please visit uh, the Pi website on this link below. Next on the agenda is GDPR, or the General Data Protection Regulation. This is being hosted by the Azure Data Services team on May 25th. It is a webcast. Uh, it's not impacting all partners, just those partners who have a global footprint. So I encourage you to register for this webinar, and the link is provided below. Thanks. touch on a webinar that's coming up May 16th. It's going to be at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's the Development and Teams uh, webinar. I encourage you guys to go out there. It's going to be uh, held with Microsoft and partners. So you're going to be able to connect with 
Microsoft employees as well as partners. Uh, you're going to be able to listen to the experts, discuss the areas that you want to uh, dive into as far as sales and competitive strategy. So I encourage you to go out there and register and attend this event. Thanks. Hey partners, on May 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, Microsoft's gonna be holding a web conference um, entitled Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus Servicing Pilot Overview. Um, I know that's a mouthful, but the session provides an overview of the three-week Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus servicing offer, which assists customers who have implemented Windows 10 in their production environment and are challenged with staying current with Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus. Um, so for more information, please click the link below for registration, click the link below. And also if by any chance you do register and you and you miss this session you will get a follow-up with um with uh, a record with the recording so feel free to reach out to sherman jason terry or myself okay in honor of the original tnt mr jimmy walker we wanted to close with dino mice Man, I I love <laughs> TNT, man. Don't you just love it? They're they're oh, this is a fantastic group. I'm so happy that that we work with them. All right, so we're going to get into uh, our PAX Eight presentation here. We're going to transfer it over here. Why don't we go ahead and uh, roll one? In a world held hostage by traditional distributors. Hardware is the only game in town. Billing is a nightmare. Provisioning an eternal hell. And partner support only a distant memory. Now, there's only one who can free you from traditional distributors. Only one who can change the course of your business. Only one who can help you take to the skies. Who are we? We're Pax 8, your cloud wingman. Well, hopefully you can tell by that video that Pax 8 is a little different than the, the distributor that you may be working with now. And where that video came from, where the wingman theme came from was, um, I, I, I do go to a lot of shows, Ryan and I, and we would sit around and listen to some of the other speakers to, to pick up best, best practices. And lo and behold, everyone is saying the same buzzwords and uh, maximizing synergies and transformative growth. If I, if I hear that a couple <laughs> more times at a show, I'm gonna go nuts. And so we said, how do we differentiate ourselves and what do partners really need? Um, and, and I think that, and I, I think the message is resonating so well that I think we've been right you need a wingman, whether it's, hey, help me make this transition to the cloud, or, hey, I'm a, I'm a small guy, I need help um, working with Microsoft, a, a big company, a, a big partner of ours. And so that's where that video came from and, and the, the theme that you'll hear us hit over and over of um, a cloud wingman. So who is Pax8? Pax8 is cloud distribution, and we've got a, a pretty great story uh, but let me jump into a couple of these slides. Okay. So PAX 8, distribution simplified. And our, our key message that we hit on is that distribution is broken. Uh, and the, the partners that we talk with give us lots of examples of this. Um, one, when working in the cloud, things need to instantly provision. So when I click buy, I'm at my customer site. They just added new, two new employees. Uh, I, I, when I click buy, it needs to be turned on right now so that I can set it up while, while I'm on site. Uh, too often I hear the story of uh, I, I placed an order. I called <coughs> my distribution partner. It's not turned on. They don't know when it will be. They don't know why it hasn't been turned on yet. Uh, I think uh, another big example would be billing issues. Uh, the complexity that is within 
prorating something when starting it on the 20th of the month, capturing that prorate, adding it on to the next billing cycle. Uh, and another great example is if I place an order on the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, that becomes my anniversary billing date. And so you could potentially have 30 a month or 365 a year uh, anniversary dates for customers that, that you could be managing. So um, I think a, a true cloud distribution partner can help you manage some of those, those challenges. And I would add to that that we talk a lot about removing friction. This is the world that we're living in. This is what we're trying to focus on to, as we listen to our partners. They wanted us to address that. Bills become unmanageable. Um, provisioning isn't fast enough. Support isn't responsive enough. And we really came to be to deal with this, to build a cloud distributor uh, from the ground up to really do it right. Yeah, so a little bit about our background. Um, we are a John Street company, and you can see from that timeline there, he has started a lot of companies, and, and he's been focused on the cloud for a long time, and he tells some great stories. If you see him at one of our shows, I would suggest you ask him about some of these companies on the bottom here. Um, but most recently was a company called MX Logic, um, which he grew into be a, being a large SaaS email filtering company. And so we experienced firsthand being on the vendor side and trying to sell a SaaS product through distribution. Um, and what we found out through that process is that they're not adding a lot of value when it comes to the cloud. Yeah, and, and I will speak personally about this. I ran the product at MX Logic, and you know, from a firsthand experience, uh, you know, it's a born in the cloud product. And when we looked at how that was working for us and our partners, we thought there's got to be a better way. This is not uh, this is not cutting it. And, and if we were at a show, we would go out and raise hands and say, "How many of you uh, know about MX Logic or use that product?" And quite a few would do that. So anyway, uh, and and we had a channel centric uh, program, so we wanted to really take that DNA and that culture and bring it over to Pax Eight and show a new way to do this. And so that really was the catalyst for us to jump in and say. Let's solve for this, let's solve for distribution, which again is a, another story that I would tell you not to do. Don't jump in and try and solve for distribution <laughs> because it has been a rocky road to get to the point where we are today. Um, and I think that the, the cloud movement that is happening right now uh, is, is, is going to be a crazy one. And, and you tell us some great stats about a trillion dollar shift that is coming. Um, but I would say my advice to partners who are, who are on this call Get your surfboards in the water because a, a giant swell is coming and you want to be ready for it. Right. And so really, uh, what PAX8 is trying to solve for is what we refer to as channel chaos. And what that means is because there has not been a whole lot of value added through distribution for cloud products, uh, many MSPs has been going direct to many vendors. And you can see from uh, our, our octopus looking graphic right there okay. that uh, it, can, it can become very chaotic. There's a lot of functions within each vendor that you need to communicate with. Um, and so Pax8 wants to jump in the middle of that as a, a true distribution partner and turn that into something that, that looks more like this. Distribution simplified. You have Pax8 in the middle as your wingman helping you to order uh, curate the right vendors to use because there is some very specific criteria um, that, that I think you should take a look at when, when choosing the right cloud vendor. And I'd add that not only is Pax8 doing that from a process perspective in that uh, graphic, but there's also a cloud marketplace that comes with doing business with Pax8. We don't charge for that um, and that is the platform that allows you to access and acquire uh, multiple cloud products and have the billing nightmare controlled. Uh, and that's brandable for each of our partners. Ryan, I think this might be a good chance for you to talk a little bit, maybe a couple of minutes on, how do you curate what, what goes on our, our vendor list and why was not Microsoft such an important one for us to no, invest great, in? Yeah, That's a great question, Nick, because uh, when I introduce myself as a chief channel officer, a lot of people will say to me is, well, what, that, what is that? <laughs> um, I'm really responsible for vetting new products. I ran the product at MX Logic, so I'm familiar with how the uh, sausage is made, if you will. But what we focus on is we don't have a line card like traditional distribution. Um, we really have to provide this comprehensive support for all the products that we have. What that means is we have to be very selective with these products. They have to be channel centric, offer good margin for our partners. And um, one of the, a key thing for our marketplace is you have to have APIs to turn these products on in an automated way. 
Um, and so this is the part of the criteria that we look for. And then the last one, which is really sort of a, a special criteria, which is when they listen to what Pax 8's doing, they're committed to it. They say, you know, I need a better way. And that's from a vendor perspective, and, and uh, that's how we do it. And so we can, and the other thing is, um, in this role, uh, Nick and I are out at the shows talking to partners quite a bit, and we get feedback from them about what products they want. Great. And so we, we keep hitting on the wingman theme, and I'm, I'm not, not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, but we think when, when working with Microsoft, um, you need a, a wingman as well. And I would probably describe the, the PDMs as a Microsoft wingman. Mm -hmm. um, and so we feel like there's a great synergy between the, the PDMs of Microsoft and Pax8 and what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to go above and beyond and provide a, a better partner experience um, on all facets. And we have taken that same approach and I am welcome to somebody challenging me on this, send in a, send in a question, uh, but we are Azure Simplified. And as far as I know, um, we are the only one who have taken a very complex billing system um, and given you options and uh, made that bill very simple and then integrated that into PSA tools. And that's something we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, but we have created a, uh, a quick video to talk about how Pax8 has made Azure very simple and repeatable. So roll two, please. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started now. You know, we get on the phone and you say you're going to do something, you do it. Welcome to the Pax8 Microsoft Boot Camp. This level of accountability, I think, is uh, beyond what I've seen traditionally. They take that cloud wingman slogan uh, quite literally. You need a wingman when working with Microsoft. This is something we decided we have to step in and help here. Prior to moving to Pax8, some of the challenges that we experienced were overcomplicated billing and really a lack of support. These are things that we heard when we started Pax8, and we continue to hear as you guys and others give us a chance. Pax8 has been really great to work with. They, they focus on our market share, which is small, medium businesses. Purchasing Office 365 through Pax8 has been a great experience. It's so much simpler than it used to be. It's really great to see them you know, centering on MSPs and taking their business to the next level. You're going to see us over these next couple days um, lay out what we think is a, a simplified plan to Azure. Today we're actually working with uh, Pax8 to do our first CSP Azure billing. I know our purchasing staff is really excited that they're not going to have to go through the same challenges they had before. Before we were more of a small fish in a big ocean. Now we feel we have a partner that we can rely on. The uh, level of excitement and energy has been uh, phenomenal. You know, a lot of times when we're working with the channel, it's you know, it takes a lot of time, and then when it comes to turnout, there's not as many people, there's not as much energy, and Pax8 really brought it. Pax8. 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 Pax8 is your cloud, your cloud wingman. What a great party that was. <laughs> that was some good <laughs> margaritas. <laughs> so anyway. That is an example of our workshop. One of the things we wanted to follow up on is and let you know that in wingman fashion, what we did after that workshop is we assembled a team to work with all of those partners to really help them embrace and build an Azure practice. And uh, one of the ways that we help them do that is we put together a 120-day plan. That plan is focused on quoting, uh, billing, simplification, and support. So really the way that I would characterize what we did there, we can go into a lot more details with you individually, is post-workshop, our team was there. We had cloud solution architects, we had Azure specialists, and their whole focus was um, getting our partners who tended that workshop into Azure and uh, doing things like helping them quote and build proposals. We heard from partners that this was a pain point, and so we were there by their side to help them do that. Uh, the other thing that we, we've done is we've done some unique things with regards to how to price infrastructure so that it, it, it's not just a, a race to zero. Uh, there's a new way to price, and, and Pax8 is supporting that within our marketplace, and we've written a white paper on that. Uh, we'll give you some information about that as well. So these are just examples of things we do and, and we will continue to do. And as always, there's never enough time in the day, so I've got to get through these very quickly. Uh, we have great integrations in the PSA tools. Um, check out our, our YouTube channel. You can see the ConnectWise integration in action. Autotask is coming very soon. Uh, I know that those, uh, those are the two uh, most often used by our partners. 
Um, but what we really want to talk about is Pax8 Stacks and how this product and this tool is really distribution simplified. Um, and and let's, let's roll three. So that is a, a little teaser of Pax8 Stacks, which is, which is going GA, our, our general availability, on May the 4th. So uh, make sure you hit our website, um, check out Stacks as it will be available for our partners. And we've got more pieces of collateral that we have also spent a lot of time on making available. Um, one, is, one is the Cloud Solution Provider Program. The other is unlocking the revenue of infrastructure as a service through Azure. Um, there's a, a couple different ways to, to go about that. One is consumption in a straight markup. The better way is to use uh, Moore's Law or, or Bezos Law um, and set a, a high water mark. And instead of looking at overages as a bad thing, it's a, a new way to set your high mark. So I'd love to talk to you more about that as well. Uh, but yeah, go check out go.pax8.com forward slash Microsoft and you can get access uh, to both of those pieces of collateral. All right. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for coming in today. Really do appreciate it. It's really been a fantastic show. Uh, we're going to land the plane here just at 10 o'clock. Uh, become a partner for PAX 8. Uh, you know, I think they've made a very compelling uh, argument as to why you should at least have a conversation with them uh, to talk about it. Um, I'm a big proponent of always, you know, uh, opening up your horizons and, and making sure that you can, um, uh, you know, uh, just make the, the, the best business decision for you and your company. Everyone's just a little bit different. Um, so with that being said, thank you everyone for joining today. Thank you, uh, Jason uh, and, and uh, TNT. Uh, really do appreciate it. Have a great uh, afternoon and, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hey there, my name is Sherman Cranster and I'm the Senior Partner Channel Development Manager here at Microsoft and the host of the panel, Strategies from the Titans of Sales and Industry. If you're interested in understanding how you can build large margins through packages, if you're interested in how to create differentiation uh, within the marketplace, or simply uh, you want to understand the latest cutting edge sales and marketing techniques, make sure you join us each week uh, on Fridays from 9 to 10 a.m. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.